ready? Because story time just got real. In this episode, we're going to take a look at some of the commissions that come through our studio on a regular basis. But first, a little bit of history on this landmark lighthouse. Since the 1980s, we've completed hundreds of monuments and memorials, both in studio and on site. All types of subject matter, from classical designs to literally having to work upside down for some very unique pieces. From wildlife portraits to the personal fur babies, all the way to high-level public memorials and internationally known commemoratives. At times we are called in by monument companies to rework a job that just didn't turn out to the quality they needed, such as this laser etching. Which brings us to our lighthouse project. We've been tasked with recreating this design on a new monument. The original is done in a pretty material, but it's very busy for this type of engraving. The engraving is done in a production style, so it's very suggestive, and given the background of this material, doesn't show through to the level and standard the client was happy with. We begin by going out on site, taking measurements of the existing memorial and design, so that we can reference those to redraw this back in the studio to begin our new monument. The replacement stone choice will be jet black granite. It's highly consistent and will give us a very high contrast in our designs. With a higher specific density, the weight of this memorial comes in right around 450 pounds. We we'll use the overhead chain fall to move it and set it onto my work table. Referencing my pictures of the existing memorial and the historic lighthouse, I'll take those measurements, draw up a new design to size, and send off some pictures to the client for approval. Once approved, I will transfer my new artwork onto the stone with a waxless transfer paper and set very subtle lines for positioning and register. From here, we will begin the freehand engraving. I'll work the most subtle areas first so that we can bring up the contrast. We're working in what's called DPI, dots per inch. We begin very lightly and go over each square inch multiple times bring up the brightness to create more form, depth, dimension, and tonality differences with the lighting direction. Since we're working in DPI, larger solid fill areas are random pattern. This gives us a smooth consistency on our tones. Techniques for solid lines are done by the angle and the speed at which we use the tool since it's reciprocal. The engraving pen has a small diamond chip set into the tip and adjustments for both speed and impact. Our time lapse is running at about 20 times speed. Each of these boards is one singular individual line. 
My design field on this memorial is approximately 12 inches high by about 28 inches in length. The actual hands-on engraving time alone takes about 23 hours for this particular monument. Known as a form of engraving, the terms that we use in the stone in the monument industry have a duality, although they are synonymous. We always call this etching in the monument industry. This gives us a specific definition for the type of technique that will be used to apply the artwork, given that there are various types of engraving methods and techniques that are applied. As these types of works are very personal to both families and individuals, sometimes they can take up to years for decision processes to become solidified for us to actually begin with the work. I'm often asked what it's like to work on monuments regularly. Is it depressing? always dealing with death and grief and having to deal on the business end with clients during the, one of the hardest periods that they will ever face. How do you keep from becoming personally and emotionally involved when you're staring at someone's memorial hour after hour, day after day? The hard and simple answer is you don't. There is a certain amount of emotional connection in the sense that I'm trying to provide a little bit of closure, perhaps, for the clients to honor the memory of those that have crossed over the best way that I can. And yet, this requires a certain amount of disconnect to remain on the professional and technical level in order to execute that. What my goal is, is to create a feeling when someone looks at this memorial in my work. In order to do so, there is a connection and an empathy to immerse myself into what that visual feeling would be. It's a sort of a foot in two worlds to keep that type of connection and still remain focusing on the technical aspects which make that possible. If the execution of the artwork and the technique do not communicate that feeling, if they're not visually appealing, it breaks that connection for the client. Some of these subtleties in the engraving that allow us to cause perspective, distance, light and shadow will be so subtle that they won't even be noticeable until we begin to fill them with the lithochrome paint that will bring out their visible tonal qualities.
this particular monument, we are working in black and white, positive and negative. We're working in halftones that we need to produce through DPI a little bit at a time, regularly taking a step back to have an overview look, checking light and shadow directions, checking form and depth. The dynamics that are created with light and shadow, the harshness of certain areas, and the softness of others. With the composition of the work, the depth, the form of a two-dimensional piece that a client can view and step into emotionally, that's our goal. At the same time, from a technical standpoint, we need to be able to do this so that any of the paint fill has a way to bind to the stone. There is no chemical bond. It is completely mechanical and has to have enough of a bite to be able to adhere and last long term, but still not be overpowering in the areas that need to stay very subtle. Once the engraving is finished, we'll clean it up with a heavy solvent and prepare it for the lithochrome paint application. Lithochromes are a specially formulated paint specifically for the monument industry and stone. For outdoor long-term use, it's a standard in the industry. Once our paint application is cured, I give it 24 hours, then we can begin to carefully blade it off the surface, reinspect the surface, and touch up any of the natural pitting of the black stone that the paint has gotten into, or tweak up any fine details as needed to complete our project. We hope you've enjoyed the video and found this informative. This is only one of the services that we offer here at the studio, in the monument industry, and for all art applications. Please remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell.